In today's video, I attempt a challenge to create rockets in three different space games capable of launching 1,000 tons of stuff into the sun. We're gonna find strange places. There's an inside? There's kind of an inside. Build some incredibly cursed rockets. I don't like that. No, 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 no where are you going? Where are you going? And fail more times than I can count. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, this is gonna be extremely difficult. We begin with our first rocket in Kerbal Space Program. The original 1000 ton payload for this rocket was several of the largest solid rocket motor the game has to offer, but unfortunately this turned out to be a horrible decision as they would constantly blow up on the pad and ruin everything. Although blowing up on the pad is going to be a bit of a recurring theme in this video. So I turn to the second heaviest thing in the game. Let's try a different thing, which is these giant fuel tanks. We need about 13 of them on top of this rocket, which is just insane. And it got so wide that I gave up putting a fairing on it. I feel like this is even worse. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. No, no, no. no. Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, <laughs> uh, I, it was, it was almost perfect. It was almost perfect. So let's hop over to Juno and see how our first attempt goes there. For the payload, I'm going to be using a weapon from the fake weapons mod, which is a bomb, and I'm going to be increasing its fuel amount so it becomes a new. It's of course 1000 tons, and I'm basically launching a nuke into the sun. Yes, I know that's pretty ironic and useless, but I think it's funny. For the rocket, I decided to use a rocket that was meant for another video years ago that I never ended up using, built by Game Night, and repurposing it so it actually does get used in a video. If you can guess what crossover video this rocket was for just based on the looks, then props to you. And let's see how our first launch goes. So the launch for this rocket with the 1000 ton nuke on it actually goes incredibly well at the start. This rocket has absolutely no problem lifting this nuke, and we somehow managed to get it into orbit on the first attempt, which is crazy. Unfortunately, whilst we're in orbit, I made an incredible blunder. I accidentally staged the nuke away, and then as I lit the second stage, the nuke fell back into the second stage and exploded, which of course would cause a mission failure. So I'm sure if I didn't make that mistake, we could have honestly actually made our light in the sun on the first attempt, which would have been insane. But let's hop over to rocket science and see how far I can get there. So this mass right here is exactly a thousand tons. So this is exactly what we need to send into the sun. So since rocket science doesn't currently have solid rocket motors, I had to entirely rely on liquid engines to push this thing to orbit. So the tanks are enormous on this thing. Okay, this is ridiculous, but this should in theory work somehow. Then the second stage. Uh. Oh, this is, this is so dumb. This is so, so dumb. Okay, that's a decent thrust to weight ratio though. So we should, in theory, be able to take off. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. I, I can't even, oh my goodness. <laughs> it actually fits on the pad perfectly though, I gotta say. Uh, okay, let's go. We have liftoff of the freaking tower. The first flight actually went surprisingly well for my expectations. However, unfortunately, when I staged the boosters, naturally the thrust to weight ratio drastically dropped. And there's only a single engine on the first stage that is keeping this thing aloft when the boosters are gone. So the second those boosters dropped off, it fell like a brick. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, this is gonna be extremely difficult. We're definitely gonna need to change some things here, but before we do that, let's go back to KSP and do some changes there. So I made a ton of different tweaks to the KSP rocket to try and get it to work and you're about to see an incredibly stupid montage of how many times I launched and exploded this stupid rocket. Oh, it almost, almost, almost. It was so close. <laughs> we got it to work. Uh, it looks... <laughs> it's, it's holding it. It's, oh, no. Oh. No! <laughs> Why? Oh, we're kind of going. We need to fix that problem, but... Oh. <laughs> okay, it's possible. I think it's possible. Oh, no, that definitely wasn't a bad look moment. Okay, it'll blow up. <laughs> oh, no. What? What? What is causing that? They should attach... Like, those should... The... Oh, why do they do that? Why? 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 Yep, just no way. I mean, it's better than what it was. Oh wait, this is the furthest we've gotten. Come on, come on. You're pitching, please. No, 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 you're going away. No, 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 no,
Damn it, damn it, damn it. Which means we... Okay, well, I didn't put those on a thing, did I? Yep, they just exploded instantly for some reason. Okay, that's, that's a big problem. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, that's surprising. Come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. No way, we're free, we're going. We, we've reached a thousand meters, let's go. No, we're turning, we're turning, we're turning. No, no, no. Oh, that ruined it. <laughs> okay. Okay, don't time warp. Do not time warp with this rocket. It's just, can we get rid of these motors without them blowing up? That was not the group I wanted to hit. So after all of that trial and error, I finally found the design that sort of worked. I managed to barely scrape it over the Carmen line. Okay, and just pretend that didn't explode. So I think for the last design, I will try a completely different idea. But before that, let's head back to Juno and try and fix our issues there. So in Juno, I make some minor improvements to the rocket, not that it needed any, but I thought I would add them anyway. This includes a larger second stage and improved second stage engines. So we'll launch this rocket and stupidly on the first attempt, I decided to not pitch up enough and I ended up blowing up in the atmosphere. Seems like a bit of a theme with this video that I blow up. However, on the second attempt with this exact same design, first we get into orbit of Drew. Then we do a burnout into Juno orbit. And on the second design attempt, we manage to get a collision with the sun. And we are about to end our burn and there it is. That is our trajectory. I think we've done it. That looks like a good trajectory towards the sun. And this is where a lot of weird things are gonna happen. First of all, I crashed into the sun normally, blowing up from the heat damage before even getting close to it. But I randomly decided to reload it and turn off heat damage just to see how close I could get to the sun. And I managed to go inside the sun's atmosphere, through its blue layer, and inside the sun was basically a black hole. There's an inside? There's kind of an inside. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. This is, I genuinely did not know this was a thing. This should be in the iceberg video. There is a black hole inside uh, Juno. We're only 4,000 meters from the surface. The actual surface. The pigeon's still on. The pigeon is actually still on. That's crazy. So with that crazy discovery out the way and Juno being finished, let's head over to rocket science and see how far I can get this time. So for our second attempt in rocket science, I decided to put giant liquid boosters on instead of the smaller liquid boosters we already had on. And I also put some fins on so we were a bit more stable going up. The theory with the bigger liquid boosters was us having a longer burn time and thus we could have a higher thrust for a longer time during the flight and we hopefully won't fall down to the ground and explode again. And I also put gyroscopes on for the same reason. The launch went much better than the first launch we did. However, unfortunately, we ran out of fuel, first of all, and we also started pitching over too much, which caused us to come off trajectory and eventually we would have smashed into the ground. So I think this design could work, but I'm going to have to work more on keeping it stable. So with that, let's head back into KSP to see one final design to see if I can get this thing even into orbit. So back in KSB, I decided to try an entirely different design for this rocket. Instead of having the 13 fuel tanks for the 1000 ton weight, I decided to go with three of the super large tanks and one smaller tank to get almost exactly a thousand tons. This meant there would be less fiddly parts and hopefully mean that there would be less collisions. And I significantly buffed up the rocket by using a more Saturn V like design, but throwing on boosters and everything else I needed. As you can see, even with this upgraded design and more powerful engine configuration, I had a lot of failures and actually got pretty far with this one but unfortunately I realized that there's really nothing else I can upgrade about this and I probably wasn't going to get anywhere with this design now. So as much as I hate to say I think I'm gonna have to give up with KSP for this video. If you have design suggestions or want to try this yourself let me know in the comments. And so now let's move on to the final design in rocket science. Back in rocket science I'm not going to change a whole lot about this rocket because the main problem is its stability and I felt like if I could fix that, then it could probably get pretty far. So I chucked more of the strongest gyroscopes in the game onto the craft, took away the RCS because it was being virtually useless, and made some minor changes to the fins. I had to launch this one several times to get the staging right, because of course I did. And I actually got over the Carmen line eventually, but unfortunately I couldn't really get much further past that because the engines either kept blowing up from the heat damage, the rocket blew up during staging, or in the end, I just didn't have enough Delta V. And finally I come crashing back down to Earth and that's really all I could do. I once again had no idea where I could have further expanded this rocket to be much better, but once again if you have suggestions let me know 
know in the comments. And so I failed with rocket science and Kerbal Space Program, but I made it in Juno. Not the best odds, but what exactly did you expect from me? And yeah, with that said, I would like to thank our members, Sean Plays Too Much, Carnassa, Pedro and Adam Cat for supporting the channel as always. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.